Welcome Clarity Coders. Today in our coding under quarantine series here, we have a very quick one for you. So I'm going to jump right in. What I've done here is I've created a directory with a couple files in it. And I'm going to show you how you can use the exclusive or operator to encrypt any file on your computer and then be able to decrypt it with a shared key. Now keep in mind, this is not a professional grade program, what we're gonna do here, so do not encrypt your only version of the file. In fact, I'm going to encrypt it in a separate file so we can see how it works, but still have our original in case something goes wrong. And of course, use this for good, not for evil. With that being said, let's jump right in. So I'm going to start out today by saving this in the directory of the files that I want to encrypt. Now, if we don't want to have to navigate to our files, we have to save our script in the same directory. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to save it in that encrypt folder. I'm just going to call it example. And as always, I will have this in a few more advanced versions of this available on my GitHub that I will share with this video. And I'm going to go ahead and get a key. So we're going to have to get a key that we want to use to encrypt our file. So I'm going to set a variable key and I'm going to equal, I'm going to set it equal to, and I'm just going to get some user input. So in Python, I can just get some user input and I'm going to ask for a key. Oh, we don't want zero between one and 255. So we're actually going to do some we're actually going to convert this to bytes. So we're wanting a number, a key between one and 255. I'll explain that a little more later. And we're going to go ahead and convert this to an integer. Now this could potentially throw an error if someone enters a string or something in our program, but this is kind of an advanced program. We're probably not going to hand this out to anyone. So that's okay for now. We're also going to ask for a file name. Now our file name, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to ask for some input. I'm going to say, please enter a file name. Remember your punctuation will matter with this and the extension. So when you're entering this, make sure you have both correct. And then I'm going to go ahead and define a function. So I'm going to create an encrypt function and I'm going to pass in our file name and our key. And down here, I'm going to go ahead and call that function. And I'm going to pass in our file name and our key. And these don't have to match the names and the parameters up there. They just are for this example. All right, perfect. So we're passing in our file here. So I'm going to get my file name and my key passed up into this function here that I'm looking at. And in Python, we can open our files by saying file equals open. We can take our file name and we can give it permissions here. Now, if we don't give it any permissions or let's say, let's just give it read permissions here. So I can open it with read permissions and I can do something like file dot read and print that out. And then I'll go ahead here and I'll do file.close. And it would help if I threw my other quote in here. There we go. So I'll give my key, I'll say 182. I used to like Blink-182, I still like Blink-182. And we'll enter our file name, I'll say claritycoders.png. And you'll see here that we get an encoding error. Now you wouldn't normally get that if you had like some of the simplistic examples you see online in tutorials. I can create a new file called text.txt. If I open that up, I can say, here's some text. And now if I read this in, I won't have a problem. So my key, we're not doing anything with that right now. But if I do text.txt, you'll see that it prints it out just fine. But when we read in images or different things like that, the encoding can become an issue. So we're gonna read in the byte by byte data and that will take care of any encoding issues that we have. So now that I change that, that small change, I can run this again and I can do our clarity coders and you see I get the data back. Now it's not very helpful or readable to us, but that's okay. So now that we have that data in here, we can start taking a look at our encryption. So how I want our encryption to work is I wanna store this, instead of printing it out to the screen, I'm gonna store it in a data variable. And then I can go ahead and close out that file because we're done with that file now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file. So I'm gonna set file equal to open and I'm just gonna append CC onto it just so we know it's our encrypted version. So what I'm doing here is I'm just appending CC dash in front of whatever our file name is, whatever we passed in there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing except with write permissions this time. So I'm gonna write the bytes. And now here I can do file.write. 
and pass in our data, whatever that was, and then file.close. Now, what we've done here is we've opened the file, we've read in the data to a data variable, then we close the file. Then we created a new file, so if th that file doesn't already exist, it's gonna create it. You see there is no cc.claritycoders, dash claritycoders. We're gonna write that data and close it. We're not doing anything with the key, we're not doing any encryption right now. And if I run this, inter integer doesn't matter, I'll do claritycoders.png, and you'll see we get another version here. And if I open that up, it is the exact same as my original. So that's the encrypted one, that's the original. Well, not the encrypted, we haven't done anything with it. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use the exclusive OR operator, and this is done a lot in academics, and it's still good for encryption if you want some personal encryption on the files on your computer or something like that. So we're gonna do that here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use exclusive OR. Or. So the cool thing about exclusive or, if you look at this example here, if you have an input value, and we're just gonna look at a binary value here, and then you have a key below, and you do exclusive or on each item in that sequence, like this. So the first item, if you have a one, and then your key has a zero, that's gonna return a one because it's exclusively or. Now, if they're both one, it's gonna return a zero because it has to be just one. Just one out of the two have to be one. Now, that's not too exciting. That's gonna give us our encrypted version. But now, if you look at that encrypted version and you run it through the same encryption again, you'll notice we get back our original value. And that's where the beauty of this comes. So it's very simple encryption that we can do on our item. First, I'm gonna actually store all of our data in a byte array. And that's gonna change things just a little bit for us. So now that I have this in a byte array, I'm gonna iterate it over it. So I'm gonna say four, and I'm gonna enumerate my variable here. So I'm gonna actually get back an index and a value. So I'm gonna give two variables here, and I'm gonna say in, and I'm gonna do enumerate and I'm gonna enumerate over my data. So what this, what enumerate's gonna do is with an array or a list, it's going to give me back a index value. So it's gonna tell where I'm at in that array or list. And it's also gonna give me back the actual value at that position. So I can show that by doing a print here. I'm gonna do an F string. Remember, you have to have at least Python 3.4 or I think 3.6 maybe even to do this. So I'm gonna show you my index here. Remember, I can just code or just type out my values here and then I can put my variable inside of curly brackets and then I'm gonna say my value and then I can put that inside of curly brackets to kind of show you what it's doing here. And if I run this, do 25, clarity coders, PNG, and you'll see here that it's giving me an index value in the array and then the actual numeric value. Now this is a byte, so it's gonna show up as a number between zero and 255. So if you kind of get cute with your encryption here and you try to like add values to it or subtract, remember it has to stay between zero and 255, just for reference there. So these are our values. Now each time we go through here, I don't wanna print this out, I wanna access the value on my data array at whatever index I'm currently on, and I wanna set it equal to my value, and I wanna take it with the exclusive OR operator, that's what that symbol is there, for whatever my key was. So I'm actually changing the value in my data array here to be whatever my value is when I do the exclusive OR on my key that I passed in. So that's actually gonna change the data inside my array. And now when I create this file down here below, it's gonna be the encrypted version. So if I run this again, now my key matters. I'll pass in 182, clarity coders, dot PNG. And you'll see up here, I have my new clarity coders. And this time you'll see it almost like it's corrupt. So it doesn't have a clean version anymore. And that's exactly what we wanted. So now we have an encrypted version of our file above here. Now it's very important that you remember whatever the number was you encrypted this as, because you're gonna need it to get that value back. So just like we showed with our simple example before, we can have a decrypt function. I'm gonna pass in the file name and the key, and you probably don't need to do these as two separate functions, because they do basically the same thing, but we're just gonna do it 
here. And the difference is I just want to do the decryption in place. So I'm not going to change the file name when I decrypt it. So I'm going to read it in the file name. If I pass it in the same key and run it through this, it's going to decrypt the file in place and then I'll be able to open it again. So now instead of encrypting here, I want to decrypt with a capital D. I'll run this again. Remember, I have to do the same number as I did for my encryption. And now this time I'm going to change my Clarity Coder encrypted one back. So I'm going to do Clarity Coders.png and you'll see that I get my image back just like that. Now go back to my encrypt function. I have a short video here. This is actually the intro that plays for my YouTube videos here. So we'll try that as well. And if I run this again, all right, we'll do 182. Ah, uh, we'll do 41. Let's change it up. We'll do short intro.mp4. Takes a little bit longer this time, but you'll see it created an encrypted version and it says it can't play it. And then we can obviously change this back to decrypt and we pass in the same 41. We do short intro.mp4. And just like that, we got our original back here. Awesome. And again, don't do these with your only files. Make sure you're doing it with some extra files that we're just playing around with right now. So what I could do with this program, I could add in some extra lines here to make it just a little more usable for us. I'm going to paste in. Awesome. So now this code that I just pasted in, it's going to assign an empty string to choice. It's going to keep running this program until the user enters three down here. So it's going to say while choice does not equal three, keep running this program. It's going to print out just a little menu here. One, two or three, uh, one to encrypt, two to decrypt and three to quit. It's going to ask for the user's choice. If the user's choice equals one or two, it's going to ask them for an integer and then an extension. If the choice is one, it's going to encrypt it. If the choice is two, it's gonna decrypt the file. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and we can run it on one of the files we haven't used. We'll use this test.docx. You'll see here, it's just a nice pretty word file. I'll go ahead and encrypt that. Enter my favorite baseball player's number there. What file do I wanna encrypt? I'll say docx. Now if I try to open this, so you'll see no, and it really makes Microsoft Word angry. I can now decrypt that file. I'm gonna enter my encrypted version now. Oops, wants the key first. I should read better. CC test.docx. Now you see just like that, I can open it again. And that's as simple as it is right there. Make sure again, if you're playing around with this, play with some files that you have copies of. Don't do this on your own only copy of a, you know, 40 page homework paper or something like that. This is encryption that you can kind of play around with on your own computer. And until next time, keep coding.